Welcome to the Mana Plus Gaming Channel. I'm very happy to meet you all. As we know, in just a few days, the Elden Ring DLC called Shadow of the Erdtree will officially be released. Today, I will guide you step by step on how to get to the Land of Shadow, where the DLC story takes place. First, to reach the Land of Shadow, you need to meet three conditions. 1. Defeat Starscourge Radon at Redmain Castle. 2. Defeat Mog, Lord of Blood, at Mogwin Palace. And the third condition is that you must touch the withered arm of Maquella along with his cocoon. Now, I will show you the steps to reach the Land of Shadow. Step 1. As soon as you arrive in Limgrave, talk to the first NPC you encounter, named White Mask Var. He holds the key to get to Mogwin Palace. He will tell you that you need to defeat Godric the Grafted at Castle Stormvale to continue your journey. Finish the conversation with him quickly. Step 2. Now, head north to reach the Church of Ella, which is not far away. You should avoid the Boss Tree Sentinel standing in front of the church gate, the best way is to go around behind it. At this church, touch the Sights of Grace and then follow the nearby path, continuing to head north. Follow the path until you see a large gate. Melina will be sitting at the Sights of Grace in front of that gate, waiting for you. Go there and talk to her, select Accept to gain the ability to level up and receive the Horse Torrent. Step 3, return to the Church of Ella at night to meet Runny. She will give you the Spirit Calling Bell, which you can use to summon spirits to help you in boss fights. If she is not there, touch the Sights of Grace at the church, then kill yourself and you will wake up there. Fast forward time to midnight, and she will appear. Step 4, go back to the gate where you met Melina, get on your horse, and ride straight to Storm Hill. There are a few guards along the way, you can defeat them to gain some extra runes. Then, touch the Sights of Grace outside the small wooden shack. Inside the shack, talk to Rod Erica. Keep talking to her until she gives you the spirit jellyfish ashes. This item allows you to summon a jellyfish, which is quite useful in the early stages of the game. Don't forget to level up. At this point, you should be around level 10 to 12. Increase your vigor a bit and also invest in other attributes that can help you deal more damage. Step 5, now, run straight north, and you will see a gate to the south with a group of well-guarded soldiers. Get past them to enter Castle Ward Tunnel. Here, you will encounter Margaret the Fell Omen, a relatively easy boss. If you pay attention, you'll see a summon sign, glowing yellow, to the right of the gate leading to the boss fight. Interact with it to summon Rogier, he will help you defeat Margaret along with the jellyfish that Rod Erica gave you earlier. After about 4 to 5 attempts, I believe you will be able to defeat him. Step 6, after defeating Margaret, touch the Sights of Grace there and talk to Melina. She will allow you to go to Round Table Hold. On your first visit, talk to Sir Gideon Ofnir, an arrogant old man who will look down on you. Then, explore the place on your own. Step 7, continue your journey from the Sights of Grace, where you defeated Margaret. You will enter Stormvale Castle, where the boss Godric the Grafted is waiting for you. Here, you will encounter the gatekeeper, who will give you two options, one is to enter the castle via a longer but safer shortcut, and the other is to go through the main gate, which is heavily guarded by aggressive soldiers. I recommend choosing the main gate, as it is the quickest way to reach the location of the boss, Godric the Grafted. Just run quickly through the soldiers and dodge the arrows to easily reach the boss's location. Step 8, now, you will stand before the gate leading to the boss fight with Godric the Grafted. This will truly be your first challenge in the world of Elden Ring. But don't be discouraged, this boss is quite manageable. Make sure that by the time you reach this point, your level is around 25 to 30, 
and upgrade your weapon to plus 1 to plus 3 if possible. To do this, explore a few caves around Limgrave on your own. This might take you 1 to 2 hours of gameplay, but it will make it easier to defeat him. When you enter the boss fight, always keep your distance if possible, as most of his attacks are close range. Especially after he uses his roll and leaps into the air, he will be stunned for a moment, which is the perfect time for you to strike. Step 9, now, proceed and open the large door, passing behind the golden throne of Godric the Grafted to follow the path through the stairs and enter Liurnia of the Lakes. Here, touch the Sights of Grace. Then, return to the initial game location and talk to White Mask Var. Inform him that you have defeated Godric the Grafted, he will then ask you to go to Round Table Hold. At this point, you will be able to talk to Finger Reader Enia here. Immediately teleport to Roundtable Hold and engage in conversation with her until the dialogue is complete. Step 10. After conversing with the old lady at Roundtable Hold, return to the location of White Mask Bar and discover that he has left, but he has left a message instructing you to meet him at Rose Church, located to the west of Gate Town in Liurnia of the Lakes. Teleport to Liurnia of the Lakes. I'll show you where Rose Church is on the map, but first, make sure to collect map fragments as soon as you arrive in this area. Don't worry, as you delve deeper into this land, the locations of the map fragments will be marked in red on your map, go there and collect them to unlock the map. Then head straight to the location of Rose Church and meet Var there, he's waiting for you. Step 11, Online Mode, after meeting him here, talk to him and he will ask you about your impression of the two fingers at Roundtable Hold. Choose, they didn't seem right, and continue the conversation until it ends. He will then give you five festering bloody fingers, to invade other players' worlds. Use this item to invade other players' worlds three times. You don't need to win the PvP matches against other players, simply invading their worlds three times will complete this task. But if you are playing the game in offline mode, don't worry, I'll show you how to complete this task even if you can't invade other players' worlds. The path will be a bit longer and more challenging, possibly taking you about an hour of gameplay. First, you need to reach Altus Plateau. To get there, you will need to use the Grand Lift of Dectus, a gigantic elevator that will take you up. To use this elevator, you need to obtain two pieces of the Dectus Medallion. The first piece, Dectus Medallion, left, is located in Fort Haight in East Limgrave. Run straight there and pick it up from a chest, it's very simple. You can even skip all the enemies along the way if you feel it's unnecessary to fight them. The second piece, Dectus Medallion, right, is located in Fort Faroth in Dragon Barrow. Similarly, run straight to this location and pick it up from a chest, skipping the enemies if you prefer. However, be careful, as the location of this medallion piece is in Kaled, an area that corresponds to a required level of around 60 to 70. I hope you will have good luck on this journey. Now that you have both pieces of the Dectus medallion, your task is to reach the Grand Lift of Dectus. The quickest way to get there is through the gate of Raya Lucaria Academy, but this gate is sealed. To open it, you need a key called the Academy Glintstone Key. It is guarded by a sleeping dragon in Liurnia of the Lakes. The dragon's location is marked here on my map, but you don't need to defeat it. Simply run straight into the area where it is sleeping. There, you will find the corpse of a man holding the key. Grab the key from the corpse and quickly return to the gate of Raya Lucaria Academy. Now, you can pass through the gate. Here, you will see a symbol, interact with it to get to the other side of the broken bridge. From there, get on your horse and ride straight to the Grand Lift of Dectus. Interact with the gigantic elevator, and it will take you to Altus Plateau in just a moment, which is where you need to go. 
Unlocking Altus Plateau is also necessary because doing so will activate the Radon Festival. In summary, the simplest way to find and defeat the boss Radon is to reach Altus Plateau and touch any sites of grace there. After reaching Altus Plateau, quickly venture deeper into this land and find yourself a map fragment. Then, get on your horse and ride to this location on the map. Here, you will find a Sites of Grace, and importantly, a teleport gate that can instantly transport you to the other side of Altus Plateau, where you will have easy access to your next destination, Right Blood Ruins. At Right Blood Ruins, you will find a red invasion sign inside the first ruins you encounter. Interact with the invasion sign, and you will immediately invade the world of an NPC named Magnus the Beast Claw. Defeat him, or if you can't, invade his world three times. Even if you lose the battles, just invading his world at least three times will count as completing the task given to you by White Mask Var. By doing this, you have completed the next and most crucial step in White Mask Bar's questline in offline mode. Step 12. After you have defeated Magnus the Beast Claw or invaded his world at least three times, immediately return to Rose Church and talk to White Mask Bar to continue his questline. The ultimate goal of all these tasks is to obtain the key that allows you to teleport to Mogwin Palace. At Rose Church, talk to Var, and he will offer you the chance to become a knight to serve Luminary Mog, the Lord of Blood. Continue the conversation and choose Anoint Me. He will then give you an item called Lord of Blood's Favor and ask you to soak the cloth with a maiden's blood. Now, get on your horse and head to the Church of Inhibition in Liurnia of the Lakes. Here, you will be able to obtain a maiden's blood. This is the location of the Church of Inhibition. The path to the church is not difficult except for a tower that can inflict madness on you if the eye at the top sees you. Try to run quickly and stay close to the cliffs right below the tower, which is the blind spot of the eye, allowing you to pass safely. Once you reach the Church of Inhibition, you will be invaded by an NPC named Festering Finger Vite. You can defeat him if you want or simply run inside, touch the Sights of Grace, and interact with the corpse of a maiden sitting on a chair nearby to soak the cloth with her blood. That's it. Step 13. After you have soaked the Lord of Blood's favor with the Maiden's blood, immediately return to Rose Church and continue talking to Var. Here, choose Offer Finger when he asks you to give him your finger. Continue the conversation until he gives you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal, which is the key we need. Using this item will instantly teleport you to Mogwin Palace. However, don't go there just yet. The next thing we should do is defeat Star Scourge Radon first, as this boss is easier to defeat compared to Mog, Lord of Blood. Step 14, now, get on your horse and head to Redmain Castle in Kaled, where the Radon Festival is taking place. In previous steps, after touching any sites of grace in Altus Plateau, the Radon Festival has been triggered. Here, interact with the teleport gate at the beginning of the bridge, it will instantly transport you inside Redmain Castle. Now, run into the courtyard, go up a few stairs, and talk to Witch Hunter Jaren, who will announce that the Radon Festival has officially begun. Then, run inside, take a wooden elevator down to the beach, and interact with the teleport gate there. You will face one of the toughest bosses in the game, Radon. Of course, this is if you fight him one-on-one -on -one or confront him head-on. I did not choose to do that. 
Instead, I took a simpler approach, summoning most of the NPCs I could. Then, I watched them attack Radon. This may take about 15 minutes, but it is a relatively safe way to defeat him without much hassle. If you still want to fight him in a one-on-one -on -one battle, I recommend reaching level 70 and making sure your weapons are as upgraded as possible. Step 15, now, the last thing you need to do before you can touch Maquella's withered arm is to defeat Mog, Lord of Blood. This is the final challenge, and indeed, this boss is a very tough gatekeeper, and I'm sure he doesn't like you either. Now, search your inventory for the Pure Blood Knight's medal and use it, you will be instantly teleported to Mogwin Palace. In this area, the level of the monsters ranges from 110 to 140, so the best way to stay safe is to run straight ahead, up the stairs and through the palace ruins, to reach the stone elevator that will take you directly to the entrance of the boss fight with Mog, Lord of Blood. As I mentioned, not only are the monsters at a very high level, but so is the boss himself. It wouldn't be a big deal if you are a pro player, but if you are not, don't worry. Level up to around 120 to 150, find better weapons like Moonvale, and upgrade the best spirit ashes you have, like Mimic Tear, and you will be able to defeat him. After defeating him, proceed and touch Maquella's withered arm, and you will reach the Land of Shadow. At the time of making this video, there are still about three days left until the Elden Ring DLC is officially released so I don't know what will happen right after touching Miquela's arm. But I believe this video has provided you with a relatively complete guide on the conditions and steps you need to take to reach the Land of Shadow and participate in the Elden Ring DLC. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, or leave a comment below, and let's discuss further. Thank you very much. If you're unsure where to go or what to do to level up to 100 or 150 to confidently face the boss Mog, Lord of Blood, I have good news for you. The place where you are standing, Mogwin Palace, is the best rune farming spot in the game Elden Ring. Now, please look at the map, get on your horse, and quickly ride to this location. Here, each monster you defeat will give you about 2000 runes, but at your level 30 or 40 with an unupgraded weapon, this will be a challenge. Instead, run to this cliff edge, make sure you equip a bow, and bring as many arrows as possible. Stand here and shoot at the giant bird below, it will run towards you and fall off the cliff. You won't have to do much, and you'll get 11,000 runes every 10 to 15 seconds. Then go to the sites of grace, rest, and repeat this many times. To reach level 100, you'll need about 3,500,000 runes, which will take you about one hour of this boring bird shooting. But after that, you'll have all the confidence you need to face one of the most annoying bosses in this game, Mod, Lord of Blood. Good luck and have fun!